from the shores of beautiful Lake Coeur d'Alene in the heart of North Idaho. Local, regional, national, and international guests discuss their topics on our forum. The North Idaho College Public Forum. With your host and moderator, political scientist, Tony Stewart. It is our great pleasure today to bring you a program of great importance uh, of an activity that's going to happen in the near future here in the Inland Northwest. One of my favorite institutions is Gonzaga University, and we have guests uh, from there. And in addition to that, uh, a very good friend from Spokane. I welcome to the program three people who are going to be involved in the Anne Frank exhibit that is uh, coming to Spokane, uh, and it's going to be at Gonzaga University. We want to especially recognize the Gonzaga University Institute for Action Against Hate that is the coordinator of this uh, program along with some other organizations that we'll find out about during the program. I'm very pleased to welcome three friends to the program. First of all is Sherry Barnard, the former mayor of the city of Spokane, and she is now the program coordinator for the Anne Frank exhibit. Sherry, it's great to see you again, and uh, it's been a pleasure in the past to be with you on many occasions and also on this program. Thank Welcome. You, Tony. It's nice to be here. Thank you very much. It's also very, uh, uh, very good for us to have on our program George Critchlow. Uh, our friend George is a, the acting director of the Gonzaga University Institute for Action Against Hate. He's an associate professor in the law school at Gonzaga University, among many other duties that he does. And, uh, George, it's great to have you here, and you've been on the program before and, and uh, been involved with our lecture series at North Idaho College. Uh, you too are a great asset to uh, uh, our Inland Northwest, and welcome to the program. Thanks, Tony. Pleased to be here. And I'm also so pleased to have Eva Lassman on the program. She is a survivor of the Holocaust. I've had the opportunity to appear with her jointly in some programs, and Eva, we're so delighted to have you here, and, and you are such a wonderful spokesperson for human rights and what we should do as a society, and welcome to the program. We're delighted you are here. Thank you very much for inviting me. I'm delighted to be here. And I'm very pleased to have our regular panelist, Janelle Burke, who's an attorney in the state of Idaho, and next to her is Steve Schink, who is the Vice President for College Relations and Development at North Idaho College, and we shall invite Janelle to commence today's questioning. My first question will be for you, George. Uh, that is, what is exactly the Institute? What is it comprised of? How does it fit into Gonzaga University? The Institute for Action Against Hate <coughs> is an institute that's developed within Gonzaga by Gonzaga faculty, staff, and students. It was an institute that was set up and approved by the Board of Trustees at Gonzaga in December of 1997. The purpose of the institute or the mission of the institute is to basically educate about hate and to help find solutions and strategies for combating hate. One of our goals is to develop curriculum within Gonzaga, which can be replicated at other institutions to teach about hate. Our emphasis is multidisciplinary. We want to hear from all the disciplines about what they have to say in terms of dealing with issues of hate and teaching about hate. And one of the main things we're trying to do on a regular basis as the Institute gets up and running, and a lot of that involves fundraising over time, is to do uh, regular activities around issues of hate. And one of the big activities we're doing this next year is to bring in the Anne Frank exhibit, which is basically a Holocaust museum, through the Anne Frank Center, which is situated in New York City, and to have this exhibit on our campus for a month this next year. Now, Sherry, that leads me to, your, to you, and perhaps you can expound a little bit on what George has just explained uh, about the Anne Frank exhibit. OK. Yes, as George said, the Anne Frank exhibit comes to us from the Anne Frank Center in New York City. I believe that this exhibit uh, has been seen by three million people in the United States to date since it was opened, I believe, three years ago, and by many, many more around the world. It's, it's an amazing exhibit. It will be housed in Schoenberg Center on the Gonzaga campus from April 27th to May 24th. We hope to bring some 30,000 students through this exhibit. And then on weekends and evenings, we'll be inviting adults, seniors, so other, the general public to come in. In other communities, it has been received very well. And in Spokane right now, we have a great, and, and the Inland Northwest, I might add, we have a great amount of enthusiasm and excitement. Even though it's going to be a very emotional, trying time, it's a chance for us to realize and to share with our young people what hate does and how important human rights is. And this 
exhibit shows that very well. Well, Eva, you were um, a survivor of the Holocaust, a survivor of that time. Uh, does Anne Frank sort of serve as a person that is a symbol of what you all went through? Um, yes and no, because she was in hiding. She did not go through the same thing as I went through. I was in concentration camps. But yes, she is a symbol because she brought it out into the open. Years ago, people did not want to know anything about the Holocaust that was swept under the rug. Now it's a great resurgence and people are very interested and I am delighted with that uh, occurrence because if we won't tell what happened, we are bound to repeat the same thing as it was when. Steve Sheen. Mrs. Lassman, I, I wonder, and I, and I hope I'm not asking a question that you're uncomfortable with, but I'd, I'd like to talk a little bit more about why it's important that the exhibit come to Spokane and what some of our needs are in the region uh, regarding um, the issues of involving hate crimes and, and maybe the more positive side of this uh, of this whole agenda, which is teaching the value of diversity. But would you be willing to share with us a little bit about your background as a Holocaust survivor? Yes. Uh, I left my hometown of Lodge in 1939, and I went to Warsaw, where I experienced several years in the Warsaw Ghetto. From there, when they made Judenrein with me free of Jews, they took us to a concentration camp, the first death camp of Eastern Poland, called Majdanek. When we got there, we were aware there were two ovens. At the time when I was there, I did not know that they had crematorias too, but later I found out they had crematorias. From that camp, from this camp, no people went out alive. When finally they made an announcement that they need a thousand women and a thousand men who should register, we were afraid and skeptical what for do they need that many people. But regardless of the skepticism, everybody went to register because it couldn't have been any worse than there. And when finally, after the severe medical uh, examinations, we were let out, we didn't know where we are going. But the only bright spot was when the camp guard told us at the gate, you are the luckiest people as you are walking out on your own power. We still didn't know where we are going, but that was kind of an inspiration. Perhaps we are going to some place where they are not going to kill us. Um, that's, I mean, it's such a, such a moving story. I, I, it almost seems difficult to make the shift now to talking about uh, this region. But clearly, those problems aren't over. Uh, the world isn't the way we want it to be yet, and, and we still have, have things that we need to address and solve. And, and I suppose this is one step in that direction. Why is it important that the Anne Frank exhibit come to this area now? Well, you know, I think there's several reasons. I think educating about the Holocaust is important anyway, just to teach the <clears throat> basic lessons and values of, of human dignity and, and, and tolerance and acceptance. Uh, I think it's particularly important in the inland Northwest and in the Spokane community because for better or worse, right or wrong, to some extent this region, as you know, is associated with bigotry. Mm -hmm. And I think to the extent that uh, that's true, and even if it's not true, we have an obligation to let the rest of the country know that we're committed to human rights, we're committed to diversity, we're d committed to acceptance. And one of the ways of doing that is by symbolizing those values to the community by bringing in such an exhibit as the Anne Frank Center and making sure that our students, our kids, our children know about these things in a way that uh, uh, takes it out of the classroom and, and into the community and, and, and gives it great visibility. Sherry is a longtime public figure in the region. How do you react to that? 
concept that we, we have a reputation um, uh, as a haven for people who, who are hate mongers. How do, how do you feel about uh, that? It makes me very sad because I know it isn't true. I, I know there are, as in almost any community, there are people who have such hate and that it, it can sting an entire area. In fact, we were back east this summer on a train and the conductor said to me, I always wanted to go to the Northwest, but I'm not going near Idaho. And I was shocked, you know, to, to think that it had gotten back that far. I originally grew up in Florida, and I grew up when African Americans got on a bus, a colored police moved to the rear. So I have spent many years working for the rights of all, and that's why I'm particularly pleased with this project. I think we all know that the best way we can educate and change is, is by educating and by standing strong, as you all, as Tony Stewart has done and, and others in North Idaho. We must take stands, and when we do, that's when we are the strong ones and we can eradicate or begin to eradicate the hate that exists. Thank you. Eve, I would like to come back and ask you a question. As I said in introducing you on the program, I have been present at uh, your presentations, and you, you speak with uh, great authority and, and with great uh, effectiveness on the, this terrible tragedy, as I would say, with the most awful tragedy in the history of the human race. Uh, and as you've indicated, we do not want to repeat that ever again. We want to never let people forget. In relation to the uh, exhibit that's coming to Gonzaga, uh, would you share with us, as someone who understands more than any of us by far, uh, what all would you recommend that happen at the exhibit that would most plan in the hearts of all the people of the Northwest, uh, not only what happened, but for us to move forward to make sure it didn't happen again? It's already been said here today that the children will be brought to the exhibit to teach children, which is very important and powerful. But for everything that happens between April 27th and May the 24th, what recommendation do you make to, to make sure we get the maximum use of that exhibit? Uh, the exhibit in itself is educational. And hopefully, if people will go and view the exhibit, will learn what hate and intolerance does. They will see how Anne Frank had to be hidden with several other people in a small room. They weren't able to get out. And perhaps people will think, maybe we shouldn't do things like that. And mostly, my recommendation is education. I myself go different schools to speak on the Holocaust. And in the state of Washington, I don't know how it's in the state of Idaho, state of Washington, it's incorporated into the curriculum. And many schools uh, do teaching the Holocaust. So I think education is the major function to eradicate the hate and intolerance. I, I think that children, as long as soon as they start to understand, education should be taught, perhaps in not all details and not all the uh, things that happen. When I go to speak, I consult with the teacher beforehand and ask her what she wants me to or he wants me to speak to show the children, not to show them the, all the gory details, which are terrible. So I think that education and speaking out, not to hide away, speaking out against intolerance and, and hate. Uh, I have a little article here from the review it's people coexistence is like planting a garden of different flowers and they harmonize with each other and they show the colors of different flowers and that's the way we should be. Thank you, most eloquently said. Mm. George, based on uh, Eva's comments, uh, as the head of the Institute, I, I know you are, this is a major project and, and it shows the success already at the Institute. What other advice would you have, and from Eva's comment, 
Uh, I'm thinking of particular what Eve's talking about schools, everyone coming, as Sherry said, from all over the Northwest. Uh, what can they do to prepare? I, I would sense that if there was certain preparation, it make it even more effective. Would you advocate uh, discussion sessions with adults or in the classroom? I know there's also a play about Anne Frank that could be brought to school and so forth. Would you like to elaborate upon other things that you'd recommend? <clears throat> what we're doing is trying to uh, create and sponsor a host of activities that go along with the exhibit. The exhibit will be the centerpiece, but among the various things we're trying to set up, and some of this depends a little bit on funding and just the limits of our imagination, really, but we want to offer curricular help to teachers throughout the Inland Northwest who will be participating by sending kids to the exhibit to help create educational units to talk about the Holocaust, to educate about the Holocaust in the classroom at the time and in connection with when those kids actually visit the exhibit itself on campus, which we'll be scheduling between now and next spring with uh, individual teachers and school districts. Uh, we're going to perhaps put the play, uh, the Anne Frank play on in a local theater in Spokane. We're talking about bringing in a speaker series of people who will talk on relevant themes and topics. We're talking about doing some musical events and um, other kinds of cultural activities and fun things as well that will go along with the exhibit. And we'll be, we'll be uh, you know, publishing news about those well in advance of the exhibit so the community can participate and know exactly what's up. Some of the things will happen on campus, some of them may not happen on campus. So, you know, Sherry's actually involved in coordinating some committee work that's uh, putting some of those events together right now. I'm really happy to hear that because that will expand the whole process. And we in Idaho and Montana and other places where this program goes, uh, we would obviously like to be involved. And I, and I would suspect that some activities could uh, be generated in those communities as they come to Spokane. Sherry, would you, and I'll get back to the panel, would you share with those interested parties out there uh, how to get in touch with you uh, when they have ideas or ideas that you'd like to share with them? Well, actually, we have an Anne Frank web page. And just briefly, it's www. I want to stop you to say. Oh, I can't say. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, oh, okay. yes. Oh, I want you to. <laughs> Let's do it very slowly. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm also killing a little time here to make sure that they get a pen or a pencil. Okay. Great. And so they can. And let's go over that again. Yeah, I really All want right. you to do oh, that. Oh, it's www. Gonzaga. Edu. Forward slash Anne Frank. One word. It's in the works. It's in the process. James Beebe, who's a wonderful professor in the School of Education, is putting it together. But we already have calls from Bonnage Ferry, Idaho, Hamilton, Montana. The word is getting out, and people are calling and wanting to bring their young people. We will be setting up scheduling in the very near future and inviting people to tune into the web page, and they can either sign up that way or they may call us at Gonzaga. Uh, university at the School of Education, the Anne Frank exhibit, and I, I don't three two three, <laughs> three six zero oh, three. I think we're we're so new in our office, but uh, but people can call me at home, Sherry Barnard. They, they can call me at six two four nine four two nine, and six two four nine four two nine. And for those out of the area, area code five zero nine. You're very right. generous. We can have your home <laughs> phone number. I really appreciate that. I just wanted to make sure we got that over. And we are, we are meeting with the school district in North Idaho in Coeur d'Alene. In just a couple of weeks, George and I will be coming up. We've met with the school districts in Spokane, the Catholic school district, the enthusiasm of the school districts and the leadership. They're meeting right now, as a matter of fact, with our co uh, community education, outreach education committee. So we are looking at involving the entire Inland Northwest in a very, very positive first-class exhibit, of course, at Gonzaga, just like North Idaho, what else? It will be top. That is so very good to hear. Uh, Janelle Burke. I want to find out a little bit more about the exhibit. Would you tell us again the dates that it's going to be here? Okay. The dates are April 27th to May 24th. It will be housed in Schoenberg Center, which is right on the Gonzaga campus, formerly the Indian Museum. It is a large exhibit, and George can probably describe it a little better than I can in four parts, and I'll, I'll let George take that part. But we will be bringing students through for 90 minutes at a time, and we will be arranging that schedule. Um, As a member of the general public, if I want to come through, about how long is, should I set aside to go through the exhibit? Well, at this point, we would say probably an hour and a half to two hours, depending on how long they want to take. And we are planning, we are working very closely with Temple Beth Shalom, which I think is so important. We're working with Rabbi Isaacson and the staff there in the 
board. Eva, of course, is a very active member there. And we're, hope we're going to have an opening event on Yom HaShoah. And that is Holocaust Memorial Day. We're having a joint service. So that is also another important key is that we're, we're really working closely with the temple. And also um, the business community are coming forward with dollars because they know how important this is to Spokane. Uh, Janelle, can we interrupt you for a moment enough to say, I, I hope that our staff can hear me and we'll bring up the, we have a photograph and all some information about the Anne Frank exhibit and, and I'll let you continue, but maybe I'll bring that up on the screen while you continue. Okay, George, what are the four components? What can I expect to see if I come to the well, exhibit? Well, as you go through the exhibit, first you're going to see about a 20 minute video which gives you some historical context for the, uh, for the Holocaust itself. But then the thematic viewpoint of the exhibit is broken down into the first period, which is the period basically of the 1920s where we see an increase of overt anti-Semitism in, in Germany. And of course all this is told through the eyes of the Anne Frank family and their experience. The second part is the 1930s where anti-Semitism and ethnic cleansing itself became a matter of government policy within Germany. And then we move into the period of the 40s, which of course is the final solution, genocide, the Holocaust itself. The fourth thematic part is very important, especially for the kids, and that is linking that historical experience of the Holocaust with what's happening in the world today. So it'll ask the viewer, the participant in the exhibit, to think about the lessons and the values that are drawn from the Holocaust experience and make connections with experiences that are happening throughout the world today and even in the Northwest today. Uh, and the mediums that it's going to portray, uh, be portrayed in, include the video? It'll be text, uh, photographs and text primarily done in a very attractive museum type format. So there'll be lots of pictures, there'll be lots of text, uh, there's some audio presentations, and then of course there's some video presentation. It's really multimedia. The, I've uh, had the privilege of going through the Holocaust Museum in Washington, D.C., and it is uh, one of the most moving things I've ever seen. Uh, clearly some of it is very graphic uh, and difficult even for adults to view, uh, probably not appropriate for young children. Is this uh, an issue with the Anne Frank exhibit? The Anne Frank Center in New York, from whom we're leasing the exhibit, uh, recommend that no one under age 10 be included among the kids who actually view the exhibit. And I think that's consistent with the policy both at the, uh, the Holocaust Museum in Washington, D.C. and also the Holocaust Museum in Jerusalem. Uh, actually, Sherry and I are going to go see this exhibit, which is currently being sponsored by an organization in Pittsburgh. And we're going to go next uh, couple of weeks from now mm -hmm. and see how it's configured and how they use their space and exactly what it looks like. So we'll have a better sense of how, how, what to do right and what not to do when we put ours together here. You know, it strikes me that this is an excellent, very positive way to speak out against hate. And, and uh, the, the, the vast majority of people in, in uh, North Idaho and eastern Washington throughout the, the Inland Empire and the Pacific Northwest, of course, are opposed to, to discrimination and, and hatred based on uh, racial or gender or ethnic or religious uh, um, bases, but we sometimes seem to come uh, become at odds over the best way to speak out. And Mrs. Lastman, you said earlier that it's very important that people do speak out. But how do you feel about that issue? I mean, we we uh, we sometimes worry about the, the right way to confront the uh, the uh, very small groups who will stage uh, parades and Aryan nations groups and things like that. Do you feel that there's a, a right way and a wrong way to Ex express our disapproval? Well, my disapproval is that they don't need, they shouldn't get any permits. They do not deserve the free speech because they advocate hate. This is my contention, but it cannot be done. However, counter uh, demonstrations or counter rallies by people like all of you here who are so interested and a couple of years ago, we had a counter rally at Gonzaga, on the grounds of Gonzaga. And I think this is very important that we show them that we don't approve of their uh, behavior at all, their, their hate and all that we do not approve. According to the Constitution, they have to give, be given the permit to march. But we, we should tell them in many different ways. We don't approve of your hatred, of your, um, of your doings, of your policy, of your uh, 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 
uh, of your way of doing things. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it needs to be outspoken. No, no confrontation, physical confrontation. I don't, because we will be mm -hmm. going down to the same level as they. But uh, philosophical confrontation, speaking out against them, like similar we had two years ago when they were the first uh, march that they had. It was uh, when you get le uh, lemon, you make lemonade, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think this was yeah. very. Uh, mm -hmm. Effective. Another very it's positive, very positive way to communicate. Way. Yeah. That's right. And I think each time when they march, we should do the same. Not march, perhaps, but have rallies and show that we don't approve of their behavior, of their philosophy. And quickly, in, in our region, if there's something fortunate that's happened, it's, it's that this overt presence by a very small group of people has galvanized a much larger group in opposition. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, we've learned from that. Mm -hmm. Is Gonzaga willing to share what it's learned and, and, uh, and the strategies and, uh, and the other things that are coming from the Institute with, with uh, colleges, universities, municipalities, and other groups around the region? Absolutely. One of the long-range missions of, of objectives of the Institute is to do exactly that, to, to, to share with other universities, and for that matter, K through 12 educators as well, what we uh, create in terms of curricula or other strategies and methods of bringing information both to students and to the public at large. And you know, we don't pr pretend that we're going to be able to do anything more than anyone else can figure out, but what we want to do is bring together resources of a multidisciplinary nature and, and, and think about this in a way perhaps that it's not being thought about in other parts of the country. On that note, I can bring the permanent conclusion. On behalf of our panel and our staff, I think all three of you, it's been a very powerful program and I want to say that how much I admire all three of you, and uh, it's people like you that make uh, democracy bright and uh, its future. And Mrs. Lastman, I just echo all the comments you made about you're very intelligent about how one does stand up and, and respond so that it never happens again. And, and good luck on your exhibit. I, I am sure that it's going to be very powerful and, and will change a lot of people in the course of their action. Ladies and gentlemen, I know you've found this program to be very powerful. and important for the future, and we congratulate Gonzaga for taking on this endeavor. And I would like to invite you to be with us again next week at the same time, and we shall discuss yet another issue. Until then, please have a good week. I am Tony Stewart. North Idaho College Public Forum is the longest running public television show of its type in North America and is seen in seven states and two Canadian provinces. Each episode is pre-recorded live and is an educational community outreach from North Idaho College. Please join us again at this same time next week for another new edition of North Idaho College Public Forum on this public television station.